Let's discuss this system. Its solution will be short and sweet, but it'll give us a chance to discuss dimensions. So we have a system that has two unknowns and four equations. So it's a system with four equations and two unknowns. So you can pause the video and think about whether it's likely that a system with four equations and just two unknowns, two degrees of freedom to satisfy four conditions is likely to have a solution. So that's thinking about the problem from the point of view of equations. We'll think about it from the point of view of decomposition, as we always do. Both perspectives are very helpful here. So approaching this problem the way we did all other problems, let's determine the particular solution first, then talk about the null space. So for a particular solution, do you see a way to obtain this column as a linear combination of the columns on the left? And I once again made it easy. This column is a straight sum of these two columns. So we need one of this column and one of this column to produce the right hand side. So a particular solution is one, one. Now let's talk about the null space. So what is the relationship between these two columns? Well, actually, these columns are linearly independent. When we have two columns, or actually two vectors of any kind, in order for them to be linearly dependent, one needs to be a multiple of the other. And with these two vectors, we clearly see that one of them is not a multiple of the other. Let me give you an example of what it would have been had one column been a multiple of the other. So the right hand side, excuse me, the second column could have been 10, 40, 70 or 2, 8, 14, or 0, 0, 0, 0. That would be 0 multiple of the other column. So that's what two columns look like when one of them is a multiple of the other. But in this case, neither one is a multiple of the other, so these columns are linearly independent. What does that mean for the null space? Well, you cannot say that the null space is empty. The null space always has the zero vector in it the trivial linear combination. So the trivial linear combination does not indicate linear dependence, and in fact these columns are linearly independent, but it's still a legitimate member of the null space, and it ought to be mentioned. So what you can write, let's see if I have space, well, I, can, I do right here, that the null space consists of the zero vector alone. And because we think of the null space as a set of vectors rather than a vector itself, it would actually be good manners to put this in curly brackets to say that the null space is a set consisting of a single vector, the zero vector. So the null space is never empty. The null space always has the zero vector in it. But in this case, the null space only has the zero vector in it. Therefore, we'll call this null space the trivial null space. So what does the trivial null space imply about the solution of the system? Well, it indicates that the solution is unique. Indeed, we know that when vectors are linearly independent, then any decomposition, if possible, is unique. So trivial null space implies that this system has a single solution, one, one, no null space to add because adding the zero vector doesn't do anything to the solution. So, the interesting question now then is, did we get lucky? Did we get lucky that the right-hand side was actually in the column space of these two vectors? What if I changed it slightly and arbitrarily by making this an 11? So we'll actually answer the question of whether or not this system has, not, has a solution. But first, let's talk about whether it's likely to have a solution. And it is not. It is very unlikely to have a solution because what we have on the left-hand side is two vectors in a four-dimensional space. These vectors live in R4, which is two-dimensional. And when we have two vectors in a, excuse me, in R4, In R4, which is four-dimensional, and when we have 
two vectors in the four-dimensional space, what happens? Well, we don't have a geometric analogy for the four-dimensional space, so let's talk about a geometric analogy for the three-dimensional space with two vectors in a three-dimensional space. When you only have two vectors in a three-dimensional space, they span a plane and only the plane. So no vector that doesn't lie in this plane can be represented by a linear combination of these two vectors. So what are the chances that some other vector, a third vector, lies in the same plane? If I were to throw this up and catch it at some moment in time, would it land in the same plane? Very unlikely. And when we have two vectors in a four-dimensional space, it's even more unlikely. So the system, as it is written now, is at the very least unlikely to have a solution. But let's now make a clean argument that will show that, in fact, it doesn't have a solution. So here's how you could argue that. Well, in order to get the 1 and the 11, you have no choice but to take 1 of the first column, because that's the only chance to get a 1, and 11 of the second column. Those are your only choices if you have any hope of getting 1, 11. But if you take 1 of this column and 11 of this column, you will have 55, 59 in the third entry, not 9. And therefore, there is no way whatsoever to get the right-hand side out of these columns. So as the system is written now, it has no solutions. And there we go, we've solved two more systems.